world isn't fair. It's fair enough. I see a lot of blacks, whites, women, lesbians out here grinding, getting after it, very successful. So where's your excuse? I see a lot of finger pointing, tons of people blaming other people. One big thing is this, fear. It keeps you making excuses for yourself. Fear lives one place and one place only, and that's in your mind. And I hate to say it, man, everybody goes, what is your secret, man? What's your secret about business? What's your secret about this? What's your secret about that? The yeah. answer is, you see these hands? The hard work, man. It, it, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not a magician. It's not magic. It's literally, you're gonna have to wake up and you're gonna have to sit there and say, today's gonna suck. And then when that day is over, you're gonna wake up again and say, the next day is gonna suck. And that's gonna be your life. We're not achieving our goals fast enough. We're very impatient nowadays. For me, it was good. I didn't have a phone. I was out of this world by myself. It was a race against David Goggins. It wasn't a race against, God, I wanna look good for this person or that person. It was me. I gotta change myself. So for me, if I lost five pounds in a week, I got a feeling, I allowed myself to feel proud of that. I didn't look at, I gotta lose 106 pounds. I'm like, man, I went from 297, now I'm 292. In one week, man, I'm, I'm killing it. We don't, we're not proud of ourselves for the small accomplishments. What we need is we need this monstrosity of the thing to happen and say, ah, I did it. Nah, there's a process that you have to go through and patience is the process. And if we don't have patience after a week, I haven't lost 30 pounds and I'm done, I'm over it. So that's what I found out with people, man. They're not patient enough to realize and to enjoy the moment, not live in it, just enjoy it. There's no finish line in life, but enjoy that moment. Roger that, man, I lost five. Let me go 10 next week. So that's the whole thing about it. That's how people lose it. And so you have to be able to really chunk these things down and not allow your mind to get away from you at the worst times. So I became an, an expert at, at, at doing just that. Even though my life gave me a lot of challenges, I made a choice. And those things didn't make me hard. I had, to, I had to find strength within them. Where I became hard was the discipline, the, the self-discipline. Key word is self. Discipline is great. Self-discipline makes you a master of yourself because no one is helping you. That's where you really start to callous your mind. You callous your mind not through enduring a hard childhood or a hard life. It's enduring the things that make you uncomfortable, which is we all have this list in our head of the things that we want to stay very clear of. Some of us are, are afraid of heights. Some of us are afraid of getting up early. Some of us are afraid of cold water. Some of us are afraid of going to college. Whatever it may be, we have this list that we are staying very clear of. You need to get the list, put it in front of you, and start making that list the only list you go from. During this list is how you start to create the calloused mind. You're never gonna be able to callous your mind by going to this magical list in the golden tool shed that makes you feel all comfortable and fuzzy inside. There's no callous there. Calluses protect your hands against that hard, nasty, gritty ass bar that you're gonna to touch a thousands and thousands of times. You have to do that to your mind. Your mind has to touch hardship. It has to be uncomfortable. It has to be put in a situation where it's forced to grow. If you're never forcing your mind to grow, there's no calluses. Calluses will never start to grow. So it starts there. One big reason why I can't stand it, public speaking, being on camera, I used to stutter real bad growing up. You're always having to face these demons that come out of everywhere you know, because I'm decently successful now, but just I've overcome a lot and I have a nice looking resume, but um, I'm still every day. I do it from my own personal, you know, fears and younger thing about, man, I'd be out here stuttering and shit. You got, you got man up, man. Put out. As a leader, there is no snooze button. It can be very lonely through your actions you can change the mindset of those around you.
you must do when you don't want to do. You have to find your best self when you are the least motivated. Your brain is like a muscle. You have to push it to a point of discomfort. All those days and nights you don't want to train, those are the days you must train. You must change the way you look at discomfort. People in life, they are the ultimate puppet masters. They exploit your weakness and they love to walk you around life and own space in your head. One of the biggest ways to cut those strings and walk on your own two feet to your own destination in life is to build self-respect, self-esteem, self-discipline, all those things. Stay hard is not just about going to the gym. Stay hard is about going that extra step when you feel like you can't. That's what builds self-esteem and self-respect. Stay hard. When the guy comes back around, looks at me, he pulls his car by me and says, why are you out here? I said, because you're not. Sometimes your motivation needs to be because no one else wants to do it. We need doctors, we need some lawyers, we need dentists, we need teachers. We also need some savages. This message is dangerous, it's too hot. I'm not asking you to be like me, do you? Every day, we're seeing who we are as people. When I was growing up, I lied for people to accept me because I didn't accept myself. So I would make up stories so, so that you would accept me into your world. Everything I did was for someone else to like me. It wasn't until I started reading my own book about how pathetic I was as a human being. I could blame my dad, I can blame kids at school, I could blame having health issues, ADD, my mom not being around. Great mom, but she was doing her thing. I could blame a lot of people, and that's the book I was reading, and I put it off on everybody else. It wasn't until I said, you know what, for me to fix this, I gotta read what the hell is wrong with David Goggins. Not, not blame anybody. Read my book and say, okay, I'm afraid of my shadow. How can I overcome that? Go in the military, get your ass kicked, do things you hate to do. Be uncomfortable every day of your life. Roger that. I'm not the smartest kid in the world. Okay, how you get smarter? Educate yourself. So the things that we run from, we're running from the truth. We're running from the truth, man. So the only way I became successful was going towards the truth. As painful and as brutal as it is, it changed me. It, it allowed me to become, in my own right, who I am today. My circle's very small. I made sure I didn't handpick these people. Because I'm like, so, so you don't want people in your corner that are like, oh, let me pat you on the back for what you do. I don't want people pat me on the back because I woke up in the morning. No. So you don't want that. You want people who are honest with you, who are honest and truthful people. So someone who's honest and truthful, who has lived and is accountable for their own personal life, that's who you want in your corner and say, hey, man, you know what? You're pretty dumb for doing this, dude. Like, this is not smart. You know, you're being a turd today. You're not getting after it. That's who you want in your corner. I went from this kid who thought he was dumb, not successful, insecure, who stuttered when I first saw somebody, to a person who can now do all these things just because I now control my own mind. And I don't care. A lot of people say they don't care. When you get to the point where you really don't care, you're dangerous. You become very, very dangerous. I'm not saying don't care like, I don't care if I do that. No, when you don't care about other people and how they view you about how you walk, how you talk, how you dress, where you want to go with your life. You know, growing up, I didn't want to tell anybody I wanted to be in the military. Because why? Some of my black friends, I was afraid of what they think. Why you want to join the military, man? I was afraid of what other people thought about me. So now, once again, man, you're allowing other people to shackle your mind. It's the, it's, the, it's the worst thing in the world. What I realized on my journey was a lot of us don't believe that we can achieve the impossible. And along my journey, I started realizing, man, I gotta tell some people, man. I discovered something that some people have, all of us have it. And I was like, my God, I'm busting down so many barriers of, I figured out all these negative things in my life that were keeping me in this hole. You can achieve the absolute impossible. You don't need great parents. You don't need a private school. You don't need to have this humongous GPA. What you need is a straight up brutal work ethic. You have to be willing to outwork everybody in the world. That, that's the hard part. I'm basically teaching you how to callous over your victim's mentality. I would call this guy up at almost every night about 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night and give him an update. I said, hey man, 
I've lost 25 pounds. No one knew what I was doing. I'm really good at creating an enemy, at creating something that I'm against. And I'm also good at if you ever tell me something that I cannot do, I'm going to let you know that I'm doing it. Somehow, somehow you're going to know one way or another that I'm doing it. It may not be in your face. I may make sure that I run across the daggone world. So then it's on the news and you turn the news on and say, how the hell? I want to do something that you know I'm here. I'm here. Every time I lose like a big significant amount of weight, I call that recruiter up and say, hey man, I'm here. I'm here. And before I knew it, man, this guy became almost like my best friend at that time. Because he started seeing, I started actually changing his life. You know, he started seeing, wow, man, like, I'm glad I took a shot on this guy. And not only did I lose weight, I had to go back and take the ASVAB test again. It's like a watered-down SAT a couple more times just to get in the Navy SEAL. So it was a big process. So that, so that three months was packed full of, like, failures, depression, even more. But what I found out in that whole three months, I lived a lifetime. In that three months, I started realizing if I can flip, if I can flip these insecurities upside down, if I can flip this fear, if I can flip all this shit that made me this depressed, insecure guy, if I can flip it and make it work for me versus against me, I started seeing the power, the power in failure, the power in insecurity, the power in self-doubt. Because I looked at everybody, it may not be true, but that's how I looked at everybody, it's being way above me. I thought to myself, if I can be at the lowest part in the world, in the sewer, and be able to overcome all this shit, I started using that as power. And I slowly started passing the guys from Harvard, the guys from MIT. Oh my God, I'm catching up. I'm catching up. I had nothing. So I started flipping it and using this power. That's just not me, man. If, if, if you like it and you hear about me through word of mouth, Merry Christmas. If not, man, so be it, man. You just don't, you don't hear about me. You gotta be willing to find the confidence. Stay in the fight, stay in the war, stay in the battle, armor your mind. What keeps a person in the fight is having purpose. Having purpose, leave the ego at the door because the ego will kill you every time. You will always quit. I've been able to get through things because I know I was a scared, uneducated kid who stuttered and had zero. And I had to look at myself in the mirror and hold myself accountable for who I wasn't and who I wanted to be. And that's what kept me going. I envisioned myself going through my dad beat the hell out of me and I was had no self-esteem. I had this vision. If I can make it to where I want to go, imagine when I look back on my damn life, how proud I will be. And now I'm here. I'm able to look back on this life I lived that many people will never understand because why when you're passionate, they think you're crazy. And you can't even explain to people why you're doing or why you did what you did because you found your purpose. And once you find your purpose, you can't really explain it to normal people because they don't understand passion because they live everyday life just going, not really finding their purpose. So I become a foreign language to people. Put me in a category of you're just crazy. No, 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 no. I'm passionate. I found my purpose in this life. Everybody's journey is different. Everybody's journey is different. I was on a journey to see who David Goggins was. And that journey took me in some of the hardest areas a human being can even imagine. Right now at 41, I'm the happiest person on the planet because, you know, I had to climb Mount Everest several times just to look down on my life to see what hell I came from. So the crucible of life that I decided to take to become who I wanted to become, David Goggins was a kid that got bullied and all these other things, and I, and I created Goggins. I created God's brought up. I didn't care about awards, I didn't care about medals, I didn't care about bad water. I don't care about ultra running. These were all things for me to build internal in myself. I did this to be proud of who I am as a human being. And most people live a lie. I hated the lie I lived. And the lie I lived was, I was nothing and I knew I was nothing. And my journey, I, I wanted to be something. I wanted to be proud of who I was and it took me in that direction. The challenge was always to do my best. It was honestly, at that point, it became a whole new challenge. But at that point where I saw my best was done, I took what <laughs> God gave me that day and said, well, I had to readjust the goals. And I found happiness and joy and peace. And like, okay, man, we're gonna reset this damn boy and we're gonna walk 105 miles and we're gonna get to the finish line. And that's what happened. And you're gonna, you're gonna walk 105 miles of bad water. This could be horrible. <laughs> I know the truth. I know that my journey sucked and I didn't like it. I didn't want to be a SEAL. I didn't want to be a ranger. I, I'm, I'm afraid of heights. I'm afraid of cold, dark water. That's why I was the only 36 African-American in 70 years to become a SEAL. 
think I'm crazy because why you think this? Because you can't see yourself going further than what you can. So you want to put a tag on David Goggins, well, tag me. I'm sorry to say, I say beyond motivated because it takes that to be successful. And I motivate you to get out of your house and go run two miles, but that wind chill hits your face once you go outside. That motivation is gonna go away real fast. You go back inside and sit your ass on that couch. A person that's driven and passionate, they go outside, feel that wind chill, they go back inside to get a new hat because I'm gonna get my damn running today. Is why I'm so misunderstood is because so few people have found their passion and found why the hell they're on this planet. And once you find it, you now understand why this guy did what he did because he found his purpose in his life. I also calloused my brain through my life, through suffering, through not saying no, for not listening to the negative energy, the negative people. And when you continue to move forward through hell and move forward past your fears and your insecurities and continue to push through this wall, your brain becomes really callous and you're able to see things that most people can't even comprehend because you've always... You never ran from the fight, you ran to the fight. And that built a different kind of mindset that allowed me to deal with very, very tough things. And you feel like, my God, I can fight all day. That's what taking souls is. But you have to have the will, the heart, the courage to go that distance when you're exactly jacked up. You have nothing left to give and give more. People don't really understand what that is when you're in the worst environment possible, the worst situation possible, and everybody's looking like, God, man, I hope this ends. And you see that. Time slows down and you see that. You're, you're feeling that. Everybody has that look on their face like, God, this gotta go. I don't wanna be here anymore. What separates me from a lot of people is they go into an, a daunting task and the task is overwhelming. You have to be open-minded to the possibilities that I can do this. Once you shut your mind down to the possibility that it can be achieved, there's no way it can happen. So that's why my, my eyes and my body light up about things because I know that if you're in a fight, you have to attack. You have to keep attacking. The enemy has to know he is not going to give up. You must break the soul of whatever's in front of you. I was never breaking the soul of anything in front of me. I started to devise ways to break a soul of a human being, of, a, of an object, of, of, of whatever's in front of me. If you keep on attacking something, nothing wants to stand in front of anything that is relentless. Nothing. It takes one second of energy to steal everybody's and then you have all the energy you need. That's all you need. We have to find our new norm. When I was going through SEAL training, it's only supposed to be six months. I was there for 18 months, kept on getting set back and set back and set back. You got to change your mindset to know my whole job now is at four o'clock in the morning. I get the sh kicked out of me for 18 months. You got to create that new norm. That has to be your lifestyle. You are the master of your own mind. Create that masterpiece. Be proud of yourself at the very end of it all. I spend my time basically trying to focus on how to better myself to continue on my journey to be a better person in life. And all those, all that time for me is wasted time. So I waste, there's no fluff in my life, man. Every second of the day is being utilized to become a better human being. The one thing that made me who I am today is being vulnerable. It's breaking myself down to the absolute rock bottom and being able to tell people who I am. And that's how I fixed it. You know, look somebody in the eyes, you know what, man? I have a whole bunch of character problems, character flaws. I've lied about this. I've cheated here. I'm, I'm insecure here. This isn't the real me. I lied to you about that. I wanted your acceptance in life. All those things happen. But the thing about it is that we get judged so quickly by who we are. We don't know. We don't go to the to where it happened. Life created this person, me. Life, life created me to be this person that I was back in the day. And I had to realize, man, that's okay, man. It's not my fault. Now I gotta go back and fix though. A lot of this isn't your fault why you do some things you do, why you feel the way you feel. But no one's coming back to save your ass. You have to go back to where it started, wherever that place is for everybody, and have the courage to go back there and start fixing what broke you. As you're trying to fix yourself and dig yourself out of this deep hole that life, society, and you helped, you helped also, those people who you saw down there in that hole who were there with you, who are your friends and people who you counted on, because you meet the people in the same situation that you're in in life. Those people become your friends. And the second you try to get out of that situation and become better, people would constantly remind me of who I used to be back in the day. And they always come out of the woodworks, man. And you come from a place that a lot of people don't want to come out of it and get out of it. And all you want to do is become somebody. Small town mentality is a real mentality. You've got to be able to get out and let your mind see open-mindedness. Because a small town, what it does to you is it closes your mind, completely closes your mind. Not everybody. This isn't everybody, a lot of people. 
You have to be able to go out there and create open-mindedness. You need space. You need space to see the world. Like a lot of racism, a lot of, a lot of ignorance in the world, it comes from people not being out and seeing other things, seeing other people, seeing all kinds of That's why we judge so harshly, because our minds are so close to the reality of, of life. When it's suffering, when it's in pain, all it wants to do is find the easy way out, which is usually quit. If you quit, the pain goes away immediately. Your mind has a tactical advantage over you at all times. It knows your weaknesses, it knows your strengths, and it will guide you into your nice comfort zone. Even if I fuck up, keep your body position like you're still fighting. Don't start getting poopy pants and get upset with yourself. No, it's a mentality, and your body language has a direct thing to your brain. So let's say I'm training for a 100 mile race, and I get to mile 50, and I feel like shit. Like everybody else, my mind gets soft. Why? Because I'm human. I'm not some damn hybrid creature that was formed from the heavens above. No, nope, not human. I suffer, I don't like it, I'm uncomfortable, I don't like it. So my mind starts to get weak. When it's suffering, when it's in pain, all it wants to do is find the easy way out, which is usually quit. If you quit, the pain goes away immediately. You gotta give yourself enough energy and fuel in your mind to stay just a little bit longer so you can talk yourself into staying for the whole thing. Most of us never start anything cold. If you're gonna go to college, you gotta study your ass off. If you wanna run a 100 mile race, a marathon, if you wanna go be Mr. Olympia, in that moment where we need self-talk, when we're failing and we're in our worst spot possible, we forget the front end, the, all the build up to where we're at today. We forget a, how, how much work we put in. We forget that journey on what it took for us to get in this moment to make the right decision. My self-talk is this. Okay, I'm gonna get the f out of here, man. I'm done. Then I remember this. You ran 2,000 miles training to be in this moment right now. We forget that. We forget the three o'clock in the morning runs or, or getting up early for work or whatever you're doing. We forget all that. In that moment of suffering, I remind myself, I only have 50 more miles. I put in six months of training going back down memory lane of all those f***ed up days. I ran the f***ing rain or I had to f***ing study real late at night and I didn't want to do it, but I did it to get here. I wanted to get here. Now you're here and now you want to f***ing quit. If you haven't put in any hard work to reflect on, you're f***ed. All this positive talk, it doesn't work if it's a lie. Like if you didn't study for your big exam and you go into it saying, I'm going to pass it. No, you're not. You're going to fail it. That self-talk is not going to work. Self-talk without real work is just a lie. So my self-talk is me reminiscing back on the struggle to get to this moment. And that tells me we're not quitting today. I'm able to visualize years beyond where I'm at right now. How are you going to feel if you can pull this off? When I got the idea to become a Navy SEAL, at 300 pounds, hate the water, can't run down the fucking block, Horrible, and I put everything on that. My whole life was, I'm gonna be a Navy SEAL, come hell or high water. Who does that? You gotta put everything on yourself. You gotta sit back and be able to imagine where you wanna be, and be like, that's the power. If I can pull this off, what kind of story have I just created? And that's what I did, I created the story. It's just, it's just the mindset change where don't look at something, like for instance, in Hell Week, they said, when you get to Wednesday of Hell Week, you're broken. It starts on Sunday, ends on Friday, and on Wednesday, you're almost done, halfway through. Everybody on Wednesday, they hear this. Cause everybody says Wednesday is like, man, you're so tired, you're done. So that becomes your new norm. For me, I was like, hang on a second. I started studying my mind a whole bunch while growing up, mm -hmm. facing these things. Don't listen to anybody's dialogue but your own. They're tired, they're not you. So it's just all about, it's just, your mind has a tactical advantage over you at all times. It knows your weaknesses, it knows your strengths, and it will guide you into your nice comfort zone. We have to reprogram our mind to get a, a, like a different vantage point so then you know how to be in charge of yourself versus your mind being in charge of you. Times of hell, even the hardest men, in times of suffering, what we do is we forget how hard we really are. Because that's what suffering is. Suffering is a test, it's all it is. Suffering is the true test of life. And so that cookie jar travels in my brain. So whenever I get put in a situation where I have poopy pants, the woe is me mentality of, oh my God, life sucks. I take a second, I take the one second decision. I step out of my life for one second, go in the cookie jar, pull up, oh, mother, you went, you went three hell weeks and finished two. 
One of those hell weeks, a guy died because it was so bad. Oh, you are a badass. You are. I put it back in the cookie jar, and I remember who I really am. I'm not the kid that, got, that was called, I'm not the scared kid. This is who I am. It's a reminder of who you truly are at the core of yourself. All these uh, catchphrases, people always say, you know, failure is a part of life, and failure is how you grow. I've said all that stuff before, but it really is a bunch of shit. It really is, man. <laughs> you know, I'm so tired of hearing all these cliche, goal setting, posters, and all that shit. Half the people who write that shit aren't even doing the shit they're talking about. Half the people talk about failure, you know, they're fucking millionaires sitting back at some nice house and whatever they're talking about. The reason why I believe I can talk of failure is because I'm still failing today, and I'm failing in a major way, and I'm, and I'm living when I'm talking. So many people who talk about all this they're they're has-beens. The people who used to do it back in the day and I talk about it. Are you living it today? So for me, failure is something that you should be afraid of. It should be afraid of. But that's why you should go out there and challenge yourself to fail. Because if you're not failing at something, that means you've set your goals to pass, to succeed at everything you do. Which means you're not setting your goals high enough. So for me, okay, I'm going to go out and break the Ginsburg rules record for pull-ups. Lofty goal which is why I failed it twice before I finally got it. I knew going into everything I've ever done in my life, Navy SEAL training, three times before I got it. Everything I've ever done in my life took me three times before I got it. I knew that there was a huge possibility of failure. But what I gained from failure is this, I become the movie. I want to feel how I feel watching someone else in the movie. When I watched Rocky get his ass kicked and I watched all these different things of failure, I was able to put myself there and say, God, man, how much do you feel now that you finally got there? That's what failure has done to me. I've watched so many things and watched someone succeed at the end of it. It's like, God, I want to feel like that. But failure causes that one feeling. Without that failure involved, you don't have that feeling. If you just pass and you succeed and you're great, that feeling, yeah, okay, I'm good. What takes you years months, years to accomplish because you just can't get over the hump, but you continue going back to the drawing board. You're looking for those few seconds after you finally figure out the equation, whatever the equation may be to get you to finally pass, to succeed. I live for that feeling, but I can't get that feeling without going through, I failed this equation, I failed this one, I failed this one, I failed this one. Oh. I'm figuring it out. So you start to feel it before you even pass, before you even get to, to, to the success part. And then once you succeed, the feeling is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And you take that feeling of success through failure and you put it in your cookie jar. And you say, I'll, I'll come back and get you again. I'm gonna need you again down the road in my life. You have to be able to break this very big thing into very small pieces. What makes people quit different challenges like Hell Week and Ranger School and 100 mile races and stuff like that is, like, for instance, you know, I ran 205 miles in 39 hours. Can you imagine what your mind is thinking at mile 100 of a 205 mile race? It's not thinking you're halfway done. It's thinking you have another, another 100 miles to go. You know, it, it, it's not thinking, oh man, we're halfway down. It's thinking, oh man, f I got a long way to go. And so you have to be able to really chunk these things down and not allow your mind to get away from you at the worst times. So I became an, an expert at, at, at doing just that.